you're going to hear from another really impressive state legislature from a, a, a state that was democratically controlled for years. Then they had a little bit of a change in 2010. They had a new governor get elected, Scott Walker. Somebody who won once, was then recalled, and won by mo more votes the second time. Somebody who stood up the special interests and pu is pushing forth real reform and balancing budgets and creating jobs. And in the word of the governor, I'm just doing what I said I would do. And people like the next speaker, Tyler August, is the reason this policy is able to get passed. They might get a super majority the next year in what used to be a very, very blue state. Ladies and gentlemen, Tyler August. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's great to be here with you. And I bring greetings to you all from the great state of Wisconsin as was mentioned, has gone, over, gone, gone under just so much change since we took majorities in both houses in 2010 and elected this guy you might know, Scott Walker, uh, as, our, as our great governor. Now we've been able to work with the governor and the legislature to eliminate what we inherited, which was a $3.6 billion budget deficit. And we eliminated that in one budget cycle. And by the way, we did that without raising taxes. As a matter of fact, those tough decisions that we made then have led us in the budget we just passed to be able to cut taxes nearly $1 billion for the hardworking taxpayers of Wisconsin. Now in the Assembly's class of 2010, I was one of 27 Republican freshmen to a state house that has 99 members. In 2012, we added 11 more new faces, and we've set out as young conservatives in Wisconsin to prove one thing, just one thing, and that one thing we all know is true here, but we need to send the message to Washington and elsewhere, and that one thing is that conservative governance can win the day. When we as Republicans actually govern as conservatives, the voters reward us at the ballot box. But first, it takes the courage to do what is right. In Wisconsin, we banded together as conservatives to withstand millions and millions of dollars of special interest money, manufactured union protests, 62 hours straight of debate on the collective bargaining bill in the state assembly, death threats, and a liberal media complicit in the left's attempts to demonize not only us, but our strong conservative message. The results of all of these efforts by the left? Well, I'm happy to report that after it was all said and done, we have a bigger majority in the state Senate and a stronger conservative majority in the Wisconsin State Assembly than we had before. And by the way, after a failed recall attempt, our governor, Scott Walker, is still the governor today. I was asked to speak a little today about what inspires me as a young conservative, and I think the best way to address that for you all is to tell you a story about my friend, Joe Nylans. Joe came into the State Assembly with me in 2010 after a, after a surprising victory, taking out the then sitting Democrat Speaker of the State Assembly in the heav heavily unionized town of Janesville, Wisconsin. Now I remember like it was yesterday, a moment when we were about to pass our collective bargaining bill during the protest, which I'm sur sure you all saw on TV. We were in our caucus with the doors closed, police posted at every entrance. The constant drumbeat of protesters in our Capitol Rotunda, chanting, screaming, it was as hostile an environment any of us had ever been in. And as we were prepared to go to the floor to pass a bill, which ended up taking 62 hours, as I mentioned, Joe stood up to address us all. And he said, you know, I'm in the most unionized district of any of us. And I know politically voting no today would be the right thing to do. And I know none of you would hold it against me. But I have kids. And with some tears in his eyes, and admittedly at this point, some in my own, Joe said, when I tell this story to my kids, I've got to be able to tell them I did the right thing. 
So I'm going to go to that floor and I'm going to stand shoulder to shoulder with you and the people of the state of Wisconsin, not just because this bill is the right thing for the state, which it is, but I'm going to do this for my kids. You want to talk about inspiring stuff, ladies and gentlemen? That's inspiring. Now, unfortunately, Joe's prediction was correct, and after the 2012 elections, he's no longer serving with me in the Wisconsin State Assembly. But boy, I think about that almost every day. Almost every day. And when the tough decisions come, I think about Joe. That's the kind of candidate that I want to support as a voter. That's the kind of candidate that I want to be. And that's the kind of elected official I want to serve with. Joe thought more about the next generation than he did the next election. And it doesn't get much more inspiring than that, friends. So my message to all of you today is that when you're looking for candidates to support with your time, your effort, your money, remember Joe. And when someone you do support gets elected and it's a tough decision coming, Hold their feet to the fire. <laughs> Remind them of why they ran in the first place. Remind them that you supported them in the first place because they wanted to do something, not be something. And make sure every single one of us in elected office always remember that every seat is the people's seat and we serve at their pleasure, not our own. So keep up the fight, my fellow patriots. It's so great to be with you all here today. And I know that together we can continue to have great conservative victories across this land. May God bless you, the great state of Wisconsin, and these United States of America. Thank you very much.